just listening to this song. Who are they playing this song for? <laughs> All the sugar boys out there. Sugar boys, good morning, good morning. So welcome back. So we are now chatting with Chairman of the World Food Day National Committee, Ms. Teresa Rosemond. Ms. Rosemond, thank you very much for coming this morning. Good morning, and to the wider viewing audience, I'm saying good morning to you also. Yes. So let's speak about the World Food Day National Committee of Trinidad and Tobago and its role. Okay. So today is October the 16th, um, designated as World Food Day. Um, what is World Food Day? Well, World Food Day basically is a call to action um, where we want to create awareness against poverty. Yeah. Uh, the committee that I'm chair of um, is an interministerial committee. It consists of persons from Ministry of Trade, my DNS, um, we have Consumer Affairs, uh, Ministry of Education, we have NAMDEFCO, we have the 4 H leaders, um, FAO, um, so that is um, other organization and non organization, government organization are part of this committee. Yeah. Okay. Um, it should be noted, however, that even though we are celebrating World Food Day today as the 16th, time has changed. So the concept of World Food Day is no longer a one day activity. It has been designated more like a yearly activity. And I think we could attest to that because when we see persons going out and sharing food to the needy, it's not like only on, to the, on this day you do that. It, you do that throughout the year. You try like, you remember many days gone by where your neighbor, if they have a fig tree, mm -hmm. they always have food. So we try to eliminate the, the sense of poverty. So this is basically what food is about. Um, the committee, which is um, chaired by, by the Ministry of Agriculture, the role of the committee, we are focused more on our terms of reference. We try to engage a lot of the youths in our program. So we have the youths, uh, more Ministry of Education. Um, when we talk about the four H's, which is, they have a very dynamic group of persons. So in our policy, we speak of, um, where we design and formulate program of activities with long-term impact on educational dimension we expand and develop education activities with the world food, agriculture, and other relevant documents. We try to promote active participation of grass root organization, um, rural people, small scale food producers, consumers in World Food Day activities. How long has the World Food Day National Committee been around? Okay, so we have been, okay, so let's go back. Yes. In 1988, the World Food Day Committee was more interagency type committee. And in 1991, we had, um, the community was reconstituted mm -hmm. to form what it is today, where we engage more other non-government institutions, more private sector. So before it was interagency, now we, it is all encompassing because at the end of the day, each one of us, we make a difference. All right. I want us to speak about specifically the type of work that uh, the committee has done over the years and what have been the benefits of that. How have people benefited from the committee? Okay. So the committee has been a very dynamic committee, um, but the thing with um, committees and persons from ministries, we have a lot of upward mobility or persons retiring, and these things happen. Yes. But during the years, we have had a lot of initiatives where we try to engage persons to understand or create that awareness of what is World Food Day. Yes. When we talk about climate change, how does climate change affect, affect us as an island, as a nation, as a country? What can we do to deal with those um, issues that, as a result of climate change? We would have had a lot of dialogue with um, even persons within the ministry or the divisions where we would have had a lot of training being done to educate persons. Yes. Um, in 2016, we had uh, a partnership with the Massey Stores, 
we would have done the run for food. Um, that was a big um, activity. Um, it's, a, it's sad that COVID came and we had a virtual and after that the activity would have been a bit dormant. But the committee is still is right now engaging um, or having discussion with the Marcy um, stores and the Supermarket Association to see how best we could revamp that activity. Mm -hmm. Because it, it brought a lot of persons out, it created that awareness. And it is good when the media come on board that all of Sundries knows about World Food Day, how we deal with poverty, how we, eat, how we make sure that our children are fed, how we make sure that food, that the so-called privilege, we don't waste what we have. Yeah. Okay? So we have a lot of activities, um, a lot of training programs, a lot of exhibitions, outreach, where persons would have had or received some level of um, awareness. How do people get in contact with your committee? Is it done that way? If someone needs assistance, they directly contact the committee? Well, we have a World Food um, a page, but you could go through the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah. Um, whatever information or question you have, the Ministry of Agriculture, they control that whole, um, what we call that web page. Yeah. So persons wanting information will lead to the Ministry of Agriculture. Or you could um, send an email to the ETS director at gov.tt if you have any questions yeah. as it relates to World Food Day. Because the ETS director, which is I, what, that I am also, um, is, as I said, the chair of the World Food Day Committee. All right, so I want to zero in on the services again. So what are the circumstances should people be going through or the challenges they are facing that they can say, look, I want to get assistance from your committee? Okay. I'm understanding the question yes is that the committee is not going to come out and actually give you a container or a bag with food yes we will engage our stakeholders we will engage the other members of the committee who will have the resources to provide that um, I must give kudos to um, Nam Defco who has been quite instrumental in providing a lot of the um, resources that we need um, even the other divisions and the other ministries, everybody has an input. So if you, you know about teaching a man to fish? Yes. Okay. So we will teach you how you could improve or better your circumstance. Say so you are at home, you have a small space. How can you provide for yourself? You cannot say, I don't have enough space. So we will teach you how to utilize that space so you could always have food. I hope you understand. Ah, okay. that's it. Teaching yeah. a man to fish. Right. And woman. <laughs> it's, a gender, it's, like a, that. it's a gender thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's speak a little bit about the upcoming activities planned by the World Food Day National Committee for 2023. Okay, so um, we have a lot of activities, but I could, I'll just talk about yeah. four right now, because as I said earlier, World Food Day is not a, a one-day activity, yes. but it is a, a yearly, should be a yearly activity. And the committee, as a committee, we felt um, that we should target more the young persons within the education system who have interest in agriculture, um, youth involved in agriculture at the community level, and we have a lot of those around, individuals who plant and produce food or are involved in aspects of agriculture, and even the general citizens, citizens of Trinidad and Tobago who are interested in growing their own food. So the World Food Day team um, this year is Water is Life, Water is Food, Leave No One Behind. The committee, we fully endorse that. And most of the activities, I should say all the activities we have planned speak of the team. Um, in 23, which is this year, um, the committee resume what we call the annual plant torch activity. Yes. This is a beautiful activity and this is quite engaging where we liaise with the Ministry of Education, um, with the 4Hs, we have plants. Well, this year, our plant of choice is the jackfruit. And I will give you a little booklet um, yeah. to show um, the jackfruit. We, and I must give kudos to the team at ETIS 
for actually coming up with a booklet which guides the children on the jackfruit. So it's on their body. The <laughs> you it tells the you about the biology and everything else, the <laughs> benefits. You know, that fruit is good for the heart and everything else. Mm -hmm. Um, some circles will know the fruit as Katahara or Koa. I hope I pronounce the word correctly. It's a Hindi name. Mm -hmm. um, it is not a well-known fruit, but based on the size and the variety, that fruit could feed a household. It is, because some grow as much as 80 pounds. They could grow very large. So we have what we call the plant torch, and to culminate the end of the plant torch, where the plants are carried to different schools, this year, we have 15 schools on board. Um, we would have carried the plants to them, and the children are allowed to nurture yes. the jackfruit plants. At the end of the two week, we go, we pick up the plants, we carry it to another school, and that plant goes around like the Olympic torch. Yeah, rotation. And the children, it is a rotation, so the children learn how to take care of the fruit, and it also teaches them how to be responsible and to be more aware of um, I see what World Food is about, about the, let's talk about climate change. If you don't nurture the plant properly, this is what is going to happen. So the children are given that responsibility to take care of the plant yeah. for the duration that they have it. <coughs> and they're allowed to keep, we'll give them two plants, one to nurture that we will use as a torch, and the other one they will plant on the school compound. And as we told them that when you graduate from school, probably three or four years after, you could go back to your school and actually see the fruit um, yeah. being utilized. And have the children been um, embracing? They have. The it is so nice when you go to the schools. I've been to a few of the schools because the committee members, they will select, um, we have, as I said, 13 schools in Trinidad that would have taken part in this activity. And we have two schools in Tobago that will be um, doing this right after us. So we have schools like Carapo. I would have gone to the Carapo school, the primary school. I want to see the children faces when they receive the plant and they tell you how they go to nurture their plant. It is, it is a good place to be when you see the, the, the generation being so positive in the things that will make them um, more responsible in the future. Yeah. So that is just one, as I said, the, the plant torch. Um, so we, let me just speak a little on it again. As I said, the team is what is life, what is food. So we try to explain to the children, and even their forage leaders will explain to them how the water is life, is applicable to the plant. Okay, so the water is life, you see it's like the root system of the fruit tree. Um, the water is food. You can imagine the branches and the trunks being like the, jack, the crop and it's about livestock. So much things we could have a conversation on when we speak of that. Yeah. One, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so I was going to say one of the other activities that we have planned is what we call the Food Heroes. That's the food exhibition? The food exhibition. So with the Food Heroes, um, we try to empower um, the community. Um, our first food, no, sorry. So the Food Hero is basically empowering the, um, the person. I think we sometimes we, I, won't, I don't use the word marginalize, but we really don't appreciate our food heroes. Yes. Looking at the things that they have to deal with, the circumstances that they have to endure to make sure that they provide food. I think they should be all champions. So yeah. that is why we have them as the food heroes. And the food heroes will include like the smaller, um, the farmers, fishermen. We have person who work in the food supply chain. These are the Aung San um, champions of food security and they work tireless, tirelessly to feed the community, often facing daunting challenges. So we really want to acknowledge these persons. Um, and this comes nicely with the team, Leave No One Behind, which reminds us that we must um, stand in solidarity yes. with these food heroes. We just have about 30 seconds again. So let me, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let me just tell you about. <laughs> but we, but we, need, we need to touch on the food exhibition. Eh? Okay. I'm so seeing on Saturday, 21st so October. So the food exhibition will be on Saturday, 21st. It will be held at Sapa, um, San Fernando. Um, there will be some giveaways there. Uh, so we're encouraging persons to come early and, be, and support our food heroes. I should mention also, we have another activity which mm -hmm. is engaging the um, persons in Rincon, which is a community effort, where we want to keep this like our food torch, like we like a yearly program, where we get the persons in these communities 
to where they sh we teach them how to manage their water supply. Yes. So I keep saying the team is water is life. So everything has to do with managing, not wasting, and appreciating the blessings that we have. Because I must say that we are quite privileged to be in Trinidad. I know some places may have water issues, but systems that we can put in place could alleviate that problem. Mm -hmm. So like with the Rincon persons, they have the waterfall, and they found in, um, innovative ways of actually capturing that water. So on the 25th, we are going to have a program at Rincon, going to be like a mini exhibition where the community will be coming out and showcasing what they have. We'll also be introducing other stakeholders to teach um, the persons in those areas. Right. And on the 21st, October, Saturday, um, there is going to be another exhibition between 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the Namdevko Farms Market on the compound of Sapa. Yes, so that is the Food Heroes. Yes. So that is on the 21st. Yeah. Okay, so we have the 21st, which is the Food Heroes. We have the 25th, which is the community effort at Rincon. And today we have our tree planting ceremony at Botanic Gardens. At what time? At 10 o'clock. Can anyone morning. come? Mm, it will be a closed setting, but you will see it on <laughs> television. This is where you come in as media <laughs> to Rosemary. highlight. Thank you very much for, for coming this morning and sharing this information with us. We do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Roseman knows why she's laughing. <laughs> well, <laughs> We're going for a very quick break, we come, but we do have this image for you from the Gulf of Paria. Oh, <laughs> you see?